This training video is intended to be accompanied by a facilitator handout and viewers should receive a study guide prior to the presentation. For your convenience, these materials can be downloaded free of charge from the Runway Safety Office website. Hi, I'm Harrison Ford and on behalf of the Federal Aviation Administration's Runway Safety Office, I encourage you to put safety first. As a licensed pilot, I have a healthy respect for the rules and regulations set forth in the aviation community. Take the time to become familiar with your airport and constantly stay alert to your surroundings. Whether you're piloting an aircraft or a person granted with driving privileges on the airport grounds, play it safe. Think before you act. The Airport Operations Area, commonly known as the AOA, is a busy environment at any given airport. This is the area on the airport grounds that includes ramps, taxiways, runways, and roadways. Essentially, it consists of everything inside the perimeter fence. Any person driving a vehicle on the AOA is subject to specific operating procedures. Prior to driving on the AOA, one should know and understand the vehicle operating procedures in effect at your airport. There is no room for deviation, as the procedures are to be followed precisely to ensure everyone's safety. From baggage handlers, fuel truck operators, caterers, to maintenance technicians, everyone plays a vital role in the aviation community. In addition to routine airport operations, there may be construction crews, shuttle services, and pedestrian traffic adding to the dynamic activity of the airport. It's obvious that the airport environment can be a hectic one, so safety must be a priority. While airports can be confusing, congested places, there are no acceptable excuses for cutting corners and compromising safety. Regardless of the type of airport vehicle you are driving, you have the same accountability and responsibility as that of a pilot taxiing an aircraft. This video is intended to address general safety concerns that apply to airports with operating airport traffic control towers. However, many of the safety concerns and procedures are also applicable to airports without control towers. It is the responsibility of your airport manager's office to make sure site-specific training is made available. To safely and successfully operate a vehicle properly on airport grounds, a thorough training program is essential. The training you receive should address the importance of teamwork, the avoidance of complacency, and the ability to adopt non-assuming behaviors. Periodic refresher training should also be conducted. It's best to learn from those who are more experienced than you. When driving on the AOA, be patient, observant, and drive slowly. At any point in time while driving on the AOA, you must know your exact location, where you are authorized to move about, and what procedures are necessary to maneuver safely in each area. Many airports have specific rules regarding vehicle operations. If you've not already received a copy of these rules, check with the airport operations office where you work for the specific safety rules for your airport. Let's now examine some safety concerns that apply to driving on any airport operations area. Never drive under any portion of an aircraft or allow the wing of an aircraft to pass over your vehicle. Regardless of the visibility conditions, when driving on an AOA, remember it's easy to get disoriented. Maintain a safe distance when driving around parked or taxiing aircraft. If an aircraft's beacon is flashing, this signals that the engine is about to start or is already running. 
The aircraft beacon lights can be found on the tail, the top, or bottom of an aircraft. Use extreme caution whenever you see these beacons flashing. Be aware that the force of an aircraft engine's blast can cause significant damage or injury. When driving about on any airport area, don't assume that a pilot can see you. Remember that the field of vision from a cockpit is limited and it is extremely difficult, if not impossible, for pilots to see you if you are behind the wings or under the nose of the aircraft. Remember that aircraft always have the right of way. Whether you are driving on the AOA in the daytime, nighttime, or in poor weather, your vehicle should be properly equipped for safety. This means your vehicle should have appropriate beacons and reflective markings. If you are authorized to operate on runways and taxiways, the vehicle may be required to have proper lighting and a working radio. At the beginning of your workday, be sure to conduct a walk-around inspection of your vehicle to ensure it's in safe operating condition. Equally important among safety concerns is knowing the location of the airport fire station. Be aware of emergency vehicles and yield to them when they are responding to a call. Besides yielding to traffic, pay particular attention to the color and orientation of signs and markings and lights that you see on ramps, runways, and taxiways. They provide vital information and everyone should know their meanings and abide by them. Please remember that every airport is unique and not all AOA signs, markings, and lights that you see in this video will be found at your airport. We encourage you to check with your airport manager's office first to find out the specific markings and signs being used at your airport. It's imperative that you commit these symbols to memory so you can protect yourself from being put in a compromising situation. In an unfortunate event of being involved in an accident on the airport grounds, report it immediately to your supervisor. Any accident that involves an aircraft has to be reported so the aircraft is not flown until the damage can be inspected and repaired. Everyone who works on the AOA has the responsibility to be alert to and pick up any foreign object debris, also known as FOD. Such debris can be tracked onto airfield surface areas by vehicles, dropped from vehicles or aircraft, or blown onto the airport premises by wind. FOD can create a hazard during taxiing, takeoff, and landing. Trash or rocks can be extremely dangerous on an AOA as they can get sucked into a jet engine and shred internal parts in seconds. Everyone has the responsibility to make sure the airport area is clean and free of FOD. Up to this point, we've been talking about driving procedures that apply anywhere on the AOA. Now let's look at the specific areas of the AOA. It is divided into two distinct areas, the non-movement area and the movement area. The non-movement area includes aircraft parking areas, loading ramps, and maintenance ramps. When driving in these areas, exercise extreme caution due to the close proximity of the aircraft. Radio contact with air traffic control is normally not required when driving in a non-movement area. Although not typically posted, the speed limit on the ramp is usually 15 miles per hour or less. Never drive behind an aircraft that is being pushed back by a tug or one that is powering back. Stop when directed by an aircraft wing walker or find another safe direction to travel. Non-movement areas are often marked with vehicle lanes. White lines usually designate these lanes. If vehicle lanes are present, you must use them. Some ramps have aircraft taxi lanes too. 
these lanes are marked by solid yellow lines. Other markings that you might see on a ramp are those markings designating aircraft parking or tie-downs. Be sure to learn about the specific markings on the ramps at your airport. Another AOA surface hazard is fuel spills. Be alert to this and do not drive through a fuel spill. Be aware that the heat generated from a vehicle's catalytic converter can ignite fuel or dry grass. The boundary between the movement and non-movement area may be marked with two yellow lines. One is solid, the other dashed. The solid line is located on the non-movement area side, while the dashed line is located on the movement area side. Unless you have permission or authorization from air traffic control, do not cross the boundary line onto the movement area. If there is no boundary marking present for the non-movement area, you should check with the airport operations office to find out where the actual boundary is located. Now let's concentrate on driving on the movement area, which is a little more challenging. The movement area consists of taxiways, runways, and other designated areas as determined by each airport. To drive a vehicle in this area, you must have authorization from airport management, have permission from air traffic, and monitor your radio at all times. Never enter the movement area unless you meet all three of these requirements. During your training, you may be required to identify on a diagram the runways and taxiways on your airport. It's important to memorize the layout of the airport. Having this information committed to memory can decrease your chances of having an accident. Markings, lights, and signs all have very specific distinctions in the movement area. Runways have white markings, which make them clearly discernible from other pieces of pavement and are identified by numbers. These numbers are located at both ends of the runway. Normally on runways you will see white edge markings and center lines. Edge lights are typically white. A number of airports have markings to indicate a pad for helicopter landings. Such pads are usually located on or in the proximity of taxiways. Taxiways, on the other hand, are identified by letters and have a solid yellow centerline stripe. Many taxiways have edge markings that are two solid yellow lines running parallel to the center line. If there are taxiway edge lights, they will be blue. If there are taxiway centerline lights, they will be green. You will also see signs and other types of markings on taxiways and runways. When you approach signs with red backgrounds and white numbers, exercise extreme caution. These signs are mandatory hold position signs and are used to inform pilots and vehicle operators that they are approaching a runway. They will be co-located with hold position markings on the pavement. Hold position markings, which are also known as hold lines, are a series of four yellow lines, two solid and two dashed. The solid lines are located on the side of the taxiway where the aircraft or vehicle is expected to stop. You may not cross these lines until you have specific authority from air traffic to do so. Maintenance 1, proceed across runway 4 at taxiway Echo. Report clear of the runway. Roger. Maintenance 1, crossing runway 4. Signs having black backgrounds and yellow letters provide information on your location. These signs tell a pilot or vehicle operator on what runway or taxiway they are currently located. Signs with yellow backgrounds and black letters are guidance signs. They always have arrows that point to the direction of a runway, taxiway, or other destination point on the airport. It is likely that you will see combinations of these signs on most airport facilities. For example, you will normally see a taxiway location sign along with the red mandatory hold position sign. Visor placards may be available for airport vehicles. These placards serve as a quick reference guide to identify airport signs and markings. Mitsubishi uh, 5-4 Uniform Sierra, Roger Grand, where we park. 
One of the most important safety aspects of driving on the movement area is communication. When using the radio, make sure you understand messages communicated to you. Use readback techniques. Repeat or read back your instructions from ATC. If you are unsure of what your controller told you, or if you don't understand an instruction, ask the controller to repeat it by stating, say again, a controller would rather repeat or explain something than have a misunderstanding that leads to an accident. So don't assume anything. Stop. Think. Then ask for assistance. When air traffic control gives you authorization to move on the AOA, and to do so appears unsafe to you, express your concerns to ATC immediately. Even after you receive authorization to proceed, look left and right as well as up in the air before entering the runway. Aircraft can appear when and where you least expect them. Use correct radio phraseology and procedures when communicating with the air traffic control tower. Refer to your training handout for proper radio phraseology or terms as well as the official aviation alphabet. Never substitute citizens band language or police 10 codes for the required airport radio phraseology. It is not appropriate. If you don't use the radio frequently, communicating on it can be a little intimidating. Relax. Everyone has to learn at one time or another. Think about what you're going to say prior to contacting air traffic control. There is also a proper sequence for speaking to an air traffic controller. Before you contact them on the radio, make sure no one else is talking. Then key your mic and state who you are calling and identify yourself by using your vehicle call sign. Oak City Ground Maintenance Vehicle 1. Wait for the controller to reply. Realize that it may take a while, especially if they are busy. Be patient. The controller will respond to you. Maintenance Vehicle 1, Oak City Ground. Then state your location and your intended destination on the AOA. Maintenance Vehicle 1 is on the terminal ramp and would like to cross 18 right at Taxiway Bravo and proceed to the VOR. Once you complete the transmission, wait for the controller's response. At this point, they will either approve or deny your request, or they might issue you some special instructions. Maintenance Vehicle 1, proceed up to but hold short of runway 18 right. Always read back any hold short instructions. Roger, Maintenance 1 will hold short of runway 18 right. Knowing proper radio procedures while using air traffic phraseology and airport terminology will make you more comfortable when it's your turn to communicate on the radio. Knowing and understanding the proper procedures helps ensure safe and clear communication. If you find yourself in a position where air traffic control has not responded to you for a long period of time, repeat your request to them. Never assume you can proceed on your own after a period of time. You are required to monitor your radio at all times while on the movement area. In the event you lose radio communications with the tower, whether it's day or night, there's a backup communication system in place. Air traffic controllers use a light gun with colored lenses to tell pilots and vehicle drivers what to do. If you lose radio contact, make sure you are off the runway, then turn your vehicle towards the tower and flash your headlights. This signals the controllers that you may need assistance. It may take time for them to respond, especially if the controller's attention is directed toward another part of the airport. Rather than use the light gun signals, the controller may call airport operations to provide you with an escort. Be patient. A failed radio is not an excuse for proceeding without permission. Here are the light gun signals and their meanings. Steady green means it's okay to cross the runway or taxiway. Steady red, stop. Flashing red, move off the runway or taxiway. Flashing white, return to your starting point on the airport. 
alternating red and green. Proceed with extreme caution. While it may seem like there's a lot to remember when driving on an airport operations area, remember to use common sense. Think before you act. Become familiar with the layout of your airport. In summary, before you begin driving on an AOA, be sure you know the following. The layout of the airfield, taxiway and runway designations, the purpose and meaning of airfield signs, markings, and lights. Your airport's specific AOA rules. The proper radio procedures, frequencies, and phraseology if you operate on the movement area. Once you become familiar with the operating procedures and regulations of driving on an AOA, don't allow yourself to become complacent. When in doubt, ask questions. You can never be too safe. Everyone has responsibility when it comes to safety. For information about your specific airport facility, contact your airport manager's office. For further information on the subject of airport driver vehicle safety, contact the Federal Aviation Administration Regional Airports Division, the Runway Safety Program Office, or visit our website at www.faa.gov slash runwaysafety.